Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of the Daily News Clips. But before I get into that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for supporting my channel and for coming back over and over again to watch my videos. I really do appreciate it. I have several items in today's news. The first one is titled Years of U.S.-U.K. Military and Intelligence Planning Behind the Sweeping Brazil Censorship Evidence Suggests. This is a Substack article, and it's, it's an interesting article. It shows how Brazil has been learning from what the U.S. and the U.K. have been doing in terms of manipulation of narratives and, and information using their intelligence services. And as we all know from the Russiagate situation in the United States, they can do quite a bit. They can change public opinion about things. And then later, later on, years later, you find out it was all a lie, but it's too late then because the opinion's already been changed. I'll put the link in the description for you. The second item I have is Uncensored, The War on Christians. This is a Tucker Carlson interview with Megan Basham. And she talks about, excuse me, <coughs> she talks about how, uh, how many different ways that Christians are being smeared by the media and by people who uh, want to change the way that the United States is into something else entirely and how they're using the media and narratives that they build to try and marginalize Christians so that they're no longer they no longer have an impact on the rest of the population but Christians are the largest voting black block in the United States so they're actually playing with fire when they do that the third article I have is the high courts 9-0 ruling lowers the bar for filing anti-DEI discrimination lawsuits. And I want to read this article, a little bit of this article to you because it's, uh, it's very interesting. Um, let me switch over here so that you can see it. Okay. Now, a unanimous Supreme Court reversed, holding that any harm, whether significant or insignificant, satisfies Title VII. Writing for the court, Justice Elena Kagan said that the policewoman does not have to show that the harm incurred was significant or serious or substantial or any similar adjective. The takeaway is that the policewoman gets to sue, and so do a lot of other people, and not just over sex discrimination or transfers. The opinion covers a lot more. Title VII applies to all compensation, terms, conditions, and privileges of employment. If you've been fired, transferred, denied a bonus, or forced to attend or excluded from a training program, mentorship program, or retreat, on the basis of your race, sex, or religion, you can sue. And now, you need not prove that you suffered any significant sort of harm. As Justice, Brett Kavanaugh, as Justice Brett Kavanaugh explained in his concurring opinion, if there's no floor on the amount of harm you might, must suffer, then the harm requirement is satisfied by any change in money, time, satisfaction, schedule, convenience, commuting costs or time, prestige, status, career prospects, interest level, perks, professional relationships, networking opportunities, effects on family obligations, or the like. So basically, what this means, probably, is the death of DEI. There's no way that DEI can survive all these lawsuits because, by definition, DEI discriminates against white people. And so the, the, what the High Court is saying is, you don't even have to show harm. All you have to show is that you were treated differently from other people. And you get to sue and you win. So it very likely could be the death of DEI. We'll have to see. But, I mean, it very likely could be. 
Um, the next article I have is a WHO official admits vaccine passports failed. WHO knew the vaccines didn't prevent transmission? And that's an interesting article, too, because once again, we learned that although the experts knew one thing, they told us something different. And what they told us was deleterious, not only to us, but to the entire world. It, it crushed economies all over the world. And this last thing, uh, this came on my radar late after I had already planned to do these others. But I wanted to read this whole thing to you because, <coughs> excuse me, Don Serber, in my opinion, is one of the uh, funniest journalists there are. He, he has a very wry sense of humor, and I think you'll see that. The title of his article is The War on Lucky Charms. Cigarettes are okay, but the government is going after a cereal because it may give you diarrhea. And then... Below that, it says, tragically delicious. The Daily Mail reported from Flamin' Hot Cheer Cheetos to Lucky Charms and even Gatorade, the thousands of everyday snacks that face bans in multiple states over ingredients linked to cancer. The story said, bills advancing in multiple states could see thousands of Americans' favorite candies, snacks, and sodas banned in their current form. Last October, California approved a historic Skittles ban that outlawed four food additives linked to cancer and fertility issues. Now, New York, Pennsylvania, and Illinois have advanced similar measures targeting a total of 13 additives that are already banned in some European countries over al alleged health risks. New Jersey and Missouri are also considering the bans. If passed, they would force companies to change their recipes or face legal action. And experts say the moves could change the look, taste, and texture of some Americans' favorite food items. The government is so concerned about your health, isn't it? And yet 60 years, and this is Don, and this is what I like about Don, is this next paragraph. And yet 60 years after the Surgeon General's report, you can still buy a pack of smokes. If we slapped a $5 a box tax on Lucky Charms, there would be no problem. The government doesn't care about your health, it just wants a piece of the action. Lucky strikes are protected, but they're always after me, Lucky Charms. The campaign against Lucky Charms began two years ago. Matthew Cantor of The Guardian reported at the time, according to a mountain of consumer claims, the cereal is causing an array of gastrointestinal symptoms, including nausea and diarrhea. The Food and Drug Administration says it has received hundreds of complaints about the cereal this year. The food safety site IWasPoisoned.com, which lets consumers warn others when they believe a product has sickened them, paints an even more alarming picture, citing 4,500 reports of illness. Mountain? A few hundred complaints in a nation of 328 million is a molehill even as amb ambulance chasers smelled that rat. The Guardian report said William Marley, Marler, a lawyer who has been at the center of the food safety battles for decades, isn't convinced that the cereal is to blame for the reported illnesses. Correlation is not necessarily causation, he wrote in an email to The Guardian, echoing comments by colleagues elsewhere. I have no idea if it's true or not, and certainly I'm no doctor. But if you eat a cereal and it gives you the runs, stop eating it. But cancer schmancer. States also want to go after the colors in Lucky Charms because they make kids happy. And maybe a little too happy. The Daily Mail story said, Lawmakers in Pennsylvania are calling for multiple food colorings, Red 40, Yellow 5, Yellow 6, Blue 1, and Blue 2, to be outlawed due to their links to hyperactivity in children. I'm no chemist or dietitian, but maybe, just maybe, all that sugar is what makes the kids bounce off the walls. The story continued. Pennsylvania's ban is the most far-reaching because it targets five of the food coloring agents that are commonly used to give candies bright, attractive colors or to change the hues of processed foods to make them more appealing. So Pennsylvania is banning candy cigarettes if they use food coloring. 
but not actual cigarettes because Pennsylvania gets $2.60 for every pack for cigarettes smoked. So smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. The government will tax you to your death. Six years ago, the communists at the Environmental Working Group bragged, under pressure from EWG and other environmental and public health groups, the Food and Drug Administration has banned seven substances used in artificial flavors that have been linked to cancer in animals. Well, we cannot give cancer to animals, but humans are another matter. Light them up if you've got them. The FDA, he got, I'm not going to read any more of this, but Don is so funny. I'll give you the link and you can read it yourself. But the way that he used irony and sarcasm to point out the hypo, hip, hypocritical positions that people take is just fascinating to read. He really is a good writer and, and a fascinating uh, has fascinating views on things. So... I thought you might be interested in that. If you like what the way he really writes, you can subscribe to his uh, uh, channel, I guess you call it, and he'll send you a newsletter every day. And I read everything he sends me because it's so funny. He just has a really unique, interesting take on things. So that's the news for the day. And I will pray for you that you have an abundant life, that you live a long time, and that you're healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. And I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, you will keep your requests known to God. You will make your requests known to God, sorry. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.